Hey creatives! It's not a spider plant talking to you, it's me! And this week I thought I'd do something a little bit different and go into three dimensions. So off the art journal page today, or the junk journal page, or the canvas, and onto this pot. And it's one of my abstracts, as you can see, so there's a lot of doodling involved and it's pretty much all done with paint pens. So, well, let's get stuck in. So you're going to need a pot for this and I found mine in a charity shop for a quid, which is, you know, just under a dollar. And it's ceramic with a sort of satiny matte satin finish. And I thought this would just be a lot easier to work on than a gloss coated pot. But apart from a quick wash with soap and water, I haven't treated the pot with anything beforehand. So I've not sanded it, I've not primed it, I've just kind of jumped straight on in with some paint pens. So you can kind of tell that I'm not too bothered about this art being permanent. In fact, as you'll see later, I use the fact that the paint will scrape back off quite easily as part of the design. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so this is totally a blank canvas fear time. You know what I mean? It's a pot. A totally new kind of surface for me and I have no idea how it's going to take to the pens, what I should do or what I shouldn't do and how, how I should basically tackle that whole three-dimensional aspect of it. So new territory and it's going to be fun to find out. The last 3D object that I did was a cardboard box decoration. Do you remember that one? I'll link that up in the cards and in the description below so you go and watch that one too. Now you can always try out the materials that you're going to use on the inside of the pot where nobody will see them if you're worried about you know messing up the pot but to be honest this was only a pound so <laughs> what's the worst that can happen? So it was only after I started playing with the water on a few surfaces that it suddenly dawned on me <laughs> bless it suddenly dawned on me that it was probably not the best way to start on a ceramic surface <laughs> as you need acrylic paint to keep its ad adhesive properties and the more you dilute it with water you know the molecules get separated further and further apart so they find it harder and harder to stick to each other and stick to the surface but I wasn't thinking like that when I did it I was just jumping straight in and doing <laughs> in my usual customary <laughs> sort of way and if this is something that you'll be worried about then go ahead and thin out your acrylics with an acrylic medium instead and you're much more likely to get a good ad adhesion to the pot using that but as you can see it didn't really matter this is not going to be an heirloom <laughs> so who cares I just wanted something to break that canvas fear ice and you know I kind of like doing these watery acrylic things on paper so that I kind of think that's just where my brain went and the other thing you could also do if you want your pot to be maybe a little bit more durable is use a ceramic paint I'm guessing I have got some ceramic paints but to be honest they, they don't have a wide range of colours in them uh, they're still a type of acrylic paint and I wanted to use my paint pens I'm trying to use up this stash and sort of get some good use out of them so uh, I just thought I would go ahead and do it and you can kind of guess by now <laughs> that this is one of those ones where I have no plan for it there's no design in my head and I'm even picking the colors on the fly so I've got no color combo that I'm working to which partly worked and partly failed as you'll see as I haven't used these pens a lot they I haven't really mixed them and tested them together and see how the color mixing would go so there's a couple of patches where there are some severely dodgy color mixing <laughs> going on which I do cover up later because they bug me too much so these first layers are really just completely experimental and I'm just kind of having some fun with drips and, and some of the pens, like the Montana pens, they love to drip. They're very well suited to dripping, which I think could be quite annoying when you're trying to do some other kind of artworks, but on here, works really well. And that amazing pink is a golden fluid paint that I've put into a refillable pen. And although it's a wonderful colour, as with you know pretty much all fluorescent pigments, they're not light fast. So uh, probably not the best choice for something that's going to be sitting unprotected in daylight all day. But hey, it looks really pretty <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> So 
So I am having to be a little bit careful as I build up my layers because as I said, you know, they will scrape back quite nicely. And rather than worrying about that scraping off of the pattern, I've actually used that property as part of the design. So some of the pens, I've put them on slightly heavier so that it will scrape a little bit of the paint that's underneath off as it goes round. So it just adds an interest to the whole piece. But if you wanted to, you could also use other tools to scrape back as well and do some more focused pattern making here if you could, if you liked. Say using brush handles or something like that would be a good way to put detailed scraping back on here. So all of these early layers, just all of them, they, as I said, they're just there for adding texture and colour. But after a few layers in, I start thinking about the design aspect for the piece. Each face of the pot is going to be different but connected and the colour will help connect the faces and make that whole pot look like one cohesive piece. But I'm also using repeated shapes and reflected shapes. So for instance, if we take how I'm using that yellow colour now, on each surface I'm adding it as a strip of yellow in some kind of way and it's different on each surface but also similar. So on one surface I have it as a broken line travelling from top to bottom. On another surface I have it as both an unbroken line and then as a broken line too but this time travelling horizontally across the pot and so on until every surface has a yellow line pattern of some form on it. So you can start using things like that to think about how to pull the piece together and you know have a look and see if you can spot some of the other repeated and reflected shapes and colours that I use to make this one cohesive piece. And another trick for designing on a piece like this where you've got edges is to use those edges and what I mean by that is to try not to see the pot just as a collection of separate sides and different surfaces. If this was a round pot it would be slightly easier as you would kind of naturally just work on it in a round kind of way but as this is a square pot it's easy to forget that it is one piece and, and just concentrate on one side at a time. So work it over edges and some of your designs put them onto the actual edge crease to help bring it together and that's just a really good trick for all kind of 3D projects like your boxes, jewellery boxes, whatever it is you like to alter. When you've got separate sides think about your edges. And I'm particularly thinking about this when I add my top layer design, as you see. Now you might want to take a little bit more time and care with your pot than I'm doing here. Um, you can see my line is super wobbly as I've got nothing supporting my arm as I draw. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with it. I'm embracing that as a stylized design feature. <laughs> And I do need to be a little bit extra careful adding this pen work on here as I don't want to scrape any of the layers off at this point. So what I found was that rather than sort of like draw it on and potentially scrape that bit back, if I'm finding that it is scraping back then just dab the, paint, the pen over the area instead and it stops it from scraping so, so easily. Now I'm not going to varnish my pot but you could if you wanted to and it might help it last longer and also help with any non-light fast colours that you've used. But for this I'm just going to leave it as it is. So here's the finished pot and you can decide which, which side you think is your favourite. The, the side that won in my household was this one so I think that's probably going to be on display the most and I quite like that one as well so it's lucky these two are together because that will work and I quite like this one too I mean it's a bit more chaotic but I still like it and this one I quite like as well so yeah have a look and decide which is your favorite and have a lot of fun trying this out as well when you next do some pot pot designing and pot painting
and if you've made it all the way to the end of the video thank you ever so much for sticking around but also I wanted to do a quick shout out for everyone who joined me on the chat when I did the premiere like a couple of weeks ago I'll link to that video so you can see it if you missed it and I will be doing more chats because I think that's quite fun it was really fun to be able to watch the video with you and live chat as well so look out for those and I will announce them on my social media in the meantime have a super duper creative creative week until I see you again next time bye